right, so today we are going to be talking about the student's T distribution. So I wanted to give you some quick information and then I'll show you um, the functions in R. So let's talk about the T distribution versus the normal distribution. So when it comes to a T distribution, our standard deviation is not known and our population is normally distributed, right? In a normal distribution, we know our standard deviation and our population is normally distributed. So that really doesn't occur, right? So when we are studying a population, we can't study the whole population. So we have to pick a sample and we need to make sure that sample is representative. But as we don't know our whole population standard deviation, it's impossible really with a normal distribution we're gonna start using T distributions. T distributions are really, really close to normal distributions. They're also called a student's T distribution. And it's what we need to use when we don't know the population standard deviation and our sample size is uh, greater than 30. Note that if my population doesn't fit a normal curve and my sample size is smaller than 30, I can't use either of these distributions. So let's take a look at what a T distribution looks like, okay. So in blue here, we have our normal distribution. Here we have a T distribution of sample size three in orange, and then sample size 12 in pink. And I know we do sample size greater than 30 because then it's gonna get really, really close and approximate a normal curve. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the student's T functions in R. So we'll save that. Oh, right, look, here's R, yay, we're so happy to be back. Okay, so there's a couple different R functions, uh, T functions in R. So I'm gonna type question mark RT, because that's gonna tell me all about my students' T distributions and the different functions. So just like our normal distribution, there are four different functions available. So we've got DT. DT is our density function. Remember that that happens to be the case. We've got DT is the density function for the uh, student's T distributions. We've got PT, before it was P norm, but now it's PT. This is our just our distribution function. We've got QT, that stands for our quantile function, right? We put in a value, a qu quantile or probability it gives us back that value in our given distribution. So that's our quantile function. And we also have our um, RT. Before that was our norm, but RT, this uh, generates random numbers that fit a normal distribution. And we must put into that our degrees of freedom. Note um, that our degrees of freedom are our sample size minus one, um, which shouldn't be smaller than 29 really. And, and that's how many I want to be put out. Uh, it's also gonna have a standard deviation of zero and a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one unless I change it. Mean of zero, standard deviation is one. So let's go ahead and play away around with randomly generating some variables that fit the student's T distribution and hopefully seeing how they approximate the normal curve. So let's define a variable. Let's call it students one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna randomly generate 100 variables. Um, my degrees of freedom is typically my sample size minus one, um, so I could do 99, um, but you could change it to anything. And I'm gonna have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So there we have students one. If I wanted to, I could print it. Students one not found. That's because I can't spell, good job. There we have, look at all those. So if I wanted to, I could double check and find that the mean of students one is really, really close to zero, but not like as close as I'd actually want it to be. 
um, I could make it closer by increasing our sample size. And my standard deviation of students one is pretty darn close to one, okay? So we can make a histogram of this. We can make a histogram of students one. So here's our histogram. Up oh, there it is. Here's our histogram. Note this is a frequency distribution and it must be a prob, I must change this to a probability distribution. Um, this would allow me to add a curve. It has to be a probability distribution. So now it's changed and I could add that curve. We're gonna do the D norm, right? I want that to be the case of our variable. We input our mean which in this case was this right here, so I could copy paste or I could type it out, whatever is most comfortable to you. And I also have to put in my standard deviation. I could also have typed in SD students one, that would have worked too. Add equals true allows me to add this line to my graph. And if I type call, C-O-L, that's gonna give me a color. How about magenta? We're having a very pink day. Unexpected symbol. Oh, you've got to put a comma here. There we go. So notice my graph goes off the chart, and that's okay. That's because if it was to fit the normal distribution, the highest point of density would probably be closer to 0.4 um, for our data set. So let's go ahead and do another data set. Let's call this students 2. Again, I'm very creative. And let's do more than 100 variables. I could do 1,000, I could do 10,000. Don't do like 10 billion. Um, that would be way, way too many because um, it would just take a long time to generate all of that data. So there I have students too, and I can make a histogram of it. Now look, that much fits much more closely a normal distribution. And I'm gonna uh, make uh, the probability equal true so I can add a curve to this. You can type in prob or the whole word probability. It's up to you, they both work. Isn't that nice, thank you R. Uh, D norm of X, I'm gonna have the mean of students to just showing how both these should work. Standardization of students two. We're gonna have add equals true, color equals orange. Is orange a good color? It would be if I spelled it right. And there we have it, right? It fits a normal curve. If I wanted to redefine students two, I could make it even bigger. Like I could add, how big do we wanna make it? I had three zeros, all right, we've got million, 10 million. So I had three more nines. Oh. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right, that redefined student's T. Now you'll see when I plot it, it's different. If it fits even more and more of a normal distribution. So that's how we can use um, the RT function. Uh, stay posted. Our next videos are going to cover how to do a t-test um, using null and alternate hypothesis.